I'd like to welcome our audience uh, to today's presentation, Cognitive and Behavioral Changes in Parkinson's Disease, Update 2009. And I, I would like to thank Caitlin and, and the astute uh, for uh, pulling this together, and I hope it will be helpful to those of you who treat patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, as you all are familiar, um, Parkinson's is primarily a motor illness, at least that's what we thought for many, many years. And we've actually refined our clinical criteria for a diagnosis of Parkinson's for many years. Most of us were trained with the uh, paradigm where the diagnosis was based on two of the three cardinal features, the rest tremor, bradykinesia, rigidity. But that unfortunately resulted in a number of misdiagnoses, and I think that was because of the prevalence of diseases like essential tremor, and as adults get older, they get a little stoop posture, maybe a little shuffling gait, and so unfortunately that uh, led to, in some cases, people with essential tremor being misdiagnosed as having Parkinson's. So most of the research done in Parkinson's nowadays uses the UK Brain Bank criteria, which emphasizes bradykinesia as the hallmark feature, the slowness of movement, which is so characteristic, uh, responsible for a whole host of symptoms of Parkinson's, including uh, ma facial masking, reduced arm swing, slowness of spontaneous movement, soft voice, um, slow shuffling gait, difficulty getting out of a chair, etc. And then in addition to the bradykinesia, patients have to have at least one or more of the other uh, features such as rigidity, rest tremor, or postural instability. <clears throat> this is just a review of the medications in our current armamentarium of drugs for the treatment of Parkinson's disease, at least in the United States. And it is quite different from what we had just 20 years ago when probably only three or four of these medications were commercially available. And I'd say this probably comes as a double-edged sword because while we've been able to treat the motor symptoms quite successfully using these medications, some of them are more prone to cause some of the cognitive and behavioral side effects as a complication of the treatment. But uh, also, we're so successful now in managing the motor symptoms that m many more of our patients actually live to the point where they develop some of these non-motor complications, specifically the neuropsychiatric aspects. The next slide just looks at the spectrum of Parkinson's disease, as those of us in neurology are familiar with. Most of our patients come in in the earliest stages, sometimes having symptoms for months or even a year or two prior to the onset of diagnosis. But uh, those symptoms can be very mild, and if they affect the non-dominant side, sometimes they're ignored or mistaken as arthritis or carpal tunnel syndrome. Sometimes patients present with uh, shoulder pain or back pain, um, uh, limping on one side. And, and so it, depending on how severe patient symptoms are, they may or may not decide to go for a therapeutic intervention. And I think there are those of us among uh, the Parkinson's uh, physicians community that uh, believe that early treatment, especially when the symptoms even are, are mild, actually is resulting in better outcome o over time. <clears throat> and while this is a controversial topic, um, there does seem to be some, um, uh, in, there se seems to be increasing evidence that keeping these people physically fit, active, and, uh, and actually in good condition uh, allows them to enjoy the benefits of good health for many more years than if we just allow them to get to the point where they're almost in a wheelchair before we start treating them. Um, but it's really the far right-hand side of this spectrum that I'm calling your attention to today, and that has to do with the fact that as the disease progresses, sometimes these non-motor complications, again, specifically neuropsychiatric aspects, may become more bothersome more devastating, more difficult to control, and certainly they make it far more difficult to come up with strategies to treat the motor symptoms, and I'll try to explain that as we go on. 